one of the reasons that the cure rates for lung cancer are so low is that we detect the majority of it so late. I mean, lung cancer is a fairly heterogeneous population of cancers. Some are incredibly aggressive, but we're learning that there are slower growing ones uh, like there are in other solid tumors. But the biggest problem is that we you know, diagnose it at stage three or stage four, and very few, less than a quarter of patients, are diagnosed with early stage disease. So if we could diagnose a lot of these patients earlier, cure rates would improve tremendously. And that's what happened in breast and colon and prostate, because they have mammograms, colonoscopy, and PSA, which have made a huge difference in increasing the percentage of people who are diagnosed with very early stage curable disease. We all have Uncle Joe, who smoked for a hundred years, two packs a day, and never got lung cancer. He just died of old age at 100, where you know you have someone who's young who only smoked or never smoked, and, and why did they get lung cancer? And I think think that's that's the root is trying to figure out. You know, why do those people actually develop lung cancer and other people don't? Right now, one of the hot things or newest things is lung cancer is that CT screening looks like it probably will have a big role in diagnosing lung cancers earlier. But the reality is that CT scans have lots of little nodules. We all have little things in our chest, especially if you're in an area with certain kinds of funguses and bacteria, and being able to tell a good nodule from a bad nodule or one you can watch from one that needs to come out is still really hard. Uh, unfortunately, in, for early detection, you know, the risk is low in never smokers, so they weren't included in these spiral CT scan screening studies. So what never smokers should be screened is something we have no idea about. The hope is that we would have some blood test in the future that could predict for never smokers what their risk might be so that you could take a never smoker that was at risk and then do the CT scan. But at the moment, uh, I'm sure no one would recommend routine spiral CT screening in a, in a never smoker. So kind of a catch-22, good news, bad news for the never smokers. The difficulty is no test is perfect. They often have to be used in combination with each other. And there are many new evolutions of tests, next generation tests, not yet proven to be valid, but very exciting about differentiating between cancer and not cancer, response and not response. Because at the end of the day, wouldn't it be nice if we had an ability to identify for a given person uh, whether or not that person is benefiting from a treatment?